Hi everybody, this is Brian James from rhino3d.com and in this video tutorial I'll be showing you how you can use the Kangaroo Physics Solver which is part of Grasshopper inside of Rhino. Here I've got a rendering of a 3D model I made with the method I'll teach you now. And you can see the exterior of the bottle here has a fabric type look to it. So we have some creasing and some gathering of the exterior surface. Now you could manually model something like this, but using Kangaroo we can let physics define the form and I'll also show you how to weave it back into a closed NURBS solid after we're done. So let's get started. In Rhino 7 you can open up Grasshopper with the Grasshopper command or you can click on the Grasshopper icon in the standard toolbar group. The Grasshopper Canvas will open and there are a lot of sections that will have components in them. Uh, I'll assume some general familiarity with Grasshopper here, so I won't cover all of the workflow intricacies, but I'll start grabbing components and dropping them to the canvas in sort of a grocery list of things that I know we'll need, so you can follow along. Starting in params, we'll go into the input section and we'll grab a boolean toggle. Also in input, we'll grab a button component. In the geometry section of params, we're going to need a BREP component and also this surface component. In the mesh section, triangulation, we're going to need quad remesh and also in triangulation quad remesh settings. If we go over to the kangaroo 2 section, we'll need under the main area a solver component. You're always going to need one of these solver components in order to use kangaroo. So I'll grab this regular solver and also in main I'll grab the show component. And I'll talk more as we hook everything up um, about what these different components do. Uh, this is really just to prep uh, a general use of kangaroo. And then I'm going to go into the sets tab, tree section, grab entwine, and also in sets in the list section, list item. I'm going to zoom in on this area. This collection of components right here is my basic setup with anything I do in Kangaroo. And I'll talk just for a moment about what this all means. Um, but the first thing we need to do, the entwine component, if you zoom in on it, you'll see these little minus and plus symbols. Click the minus next to this last branch item. We really are only going to need to entwine two different data streams and the first one is going to be from this show component and the other one is going to come from all of our solver components um, our particle solving components from kangaroo such as anchors or wind or inflation and those will ultimately go into the goals objects but we don't need to do that yet and the output is going to be more than one thing. So the list item component is going to pull off the first item from the list, which is going to be what goes into show, and that's going to be the ultimate mesh that is our, our form. All right, so the next things that we'll need here are um, a model and a surface. So I'm going to real quick minimize Grasshopper and draw a bottle form with a curve and grid snap and I'll turn off my grid snap and this is a bottle form each one of these grid boxes is one inch in my model so this is uh, let's see about eight inches tall the bottle at the moment And I'll draw another curve here. 
and turn off my grid snap to define that interior wall. You could use an offset, but I want it to get a little bit thinner here, like that. And then I'll go into the Curve Tools and use Blend CRV to blend the lip together, and I'll join the result. So now I've got this curve, and I'll use Revolve to revolve between those two points is the revolve axis and then F for full circle. And uh, we don't need that curve anymore so I'll throw that away. Go into shaded mode so you can see this. If I have my ISO curves on, you can clearly see it is a NURB surface. This is the structure that we have. I'm going to bring back Grasshopper's canvas here, and any of these orange components are missing data. So I'm going to reference the object here as a solid. So I'll right-click the BREP component, choose Set 1 BREP. And at this point, if I take the Rhino viewport and switch it to wireframe, you'll see this red preview. That's the BREP. You right-click it, you can uncheck the preview. And we also need a surface. Uh, now the surface is going to be around the bottle here. So the fastest way to get that surface is to make a copy. So I'm in Rhino's command line here. Now copy and then the in place option, I. And then I'm going to take this with cell last, that'll select the last created object because I had two things on top of each other here and I don't want to mess up this association that is on the BREP component. So cell last lets me select the copy that I just made. And then I'll use the split command, ISO curve, and shrink equals yes. So those are all command line options. So I'll split it there and there and then enter and then I'm going to hold down control and click to deselect the section in the middle. You can see what's still highlighted is the lip and base and the inside portions. I'll delete those and so now what I'm left with is the whole surface of the bottle and then the piece from the copy after the split. I'll take that and I'll rebuild it with the rebuild command and I'm going to rebuild it um, at least so that it has enough control points that it's not going to really change shape. So it had 8 by 15, now it's going to have 10 by 10, degree 3 by degree 3, and I click OK. And then I'll turn on the control points with F10, and this part's pretty important. What I'm going to do is take this row of control points and I'm going to scale it. So you can start dragging with one of the scale handles on the gumball then hold down shift and you'll scale in 3D. Now because these are planar rows of points they're not moving uh, up or down in Z when I'm scaling. You could also offset it if you wanted to. There's nothing wrong with that or you could do more rows of points like this. See if there's more than one selected, it's gonna move up or down as well because it's scaling in 3D. If you wanna scale in 2D, you just gotta orient your view until you see the two axis handle, then you hold down shift, and now I'm scaling in 2D. It doesn't have to be anything special here, just not on the actual surface of the bottle. Kinda like that. And I'll turn off my control points so I'll select them again so you can see the difference in wireframe. So that is our big piece, our big piece of fabric. What will be the fabric? And this is the solid bottle form underneath. And maybe I'll drag up just the base a little bit more here. Bring these guys up. Like that. All right. Now I'll take this surface and I'm going to reference it in the grasshopper definition. 
So I'll right click that component and choose set one surface. Again, we see our red preview here. I'll right click it, toggle the preview off. I'll generally toggle the previews off as I go from left to right so that we don't um, get confused about what we're looking at. Now I want to take this surface and I want to make a quad mesh. Now quads are four-sided polygons, so I'll use the quad remesh component here. And then the settings component goes into settings. Now you don't see the edges of the resulting mesh, you just see it highlighted. So if you go into the mesh section of Grasshopper Analysis, you'll have this mesh edges component. So just for your visualization of how many quads get created, you can drag the result into that and, uh, and select it in order to highlight those green. Now the target count is 1,000, and that may be perfectly fine. But if you want to be able to experiment with different uh, numbers of polygons, of quads in the result, uh, we'll make a number slider, and this is how I like to do it. Double-click the canvas type the low end value 200 then the less than symbol then the high end value 5000 in this case I think would be as high as I would want to go and then enter and so now I've got a number slider between 200 and 5000 and I'll drag that into the target count you can see how that number of edges change as we go up and the result is going to look different depending on um, how many edges, how many vertices are in the mesh that Kangaroo is going to be deforming. Uh, something like 500, if you double click on that, you can just change the value. So now we've got this mesh. I'll disable the preview of that. I don't need the mesh wires uh, anymore. I brought this up just to show you. And now I'm going to want the vertices of this mesh. So if you go into the mesh section of Grasshopper again, Analysis, you can deconstruct the mesh with the Deconstruct Mesh component. And you can drag that quad mesh that we just created from our surface into here. And it's important that it's a quad mesh. There are many ways to mesh objects and uh, all those mesh objects could be used by Kangaroo. It could be all triangles, for instance, or it could be the render mesh extracted from the model. But I want a quad mesh here because I want to go round trip back to a NURBS model, ultimately. So um, this quad remesh method is, is ideal for this round trip workflow that I'll show you. So here we've got the vertices from the mesh. Now I want to use some of these vertices as anchors, uh, meaning that when I relax this surface into a fabric, I don't want some of the um, points to move. I want them. I don't want the whole thing to just fall onto the floor. So uh, what I want to do is m back in Rhino here. I'm going to make a sphere, and I'll just make a sphere at the top of my bottle. I just grabbed a end or a near snap or something there. And then you can just scale it to size. So this sphere is going to be a separate BREP, uh, boundary representation. So we go to params and here you've got BREP and I right click this set one BREP and what, I'm, what I've made this for is to check whether or not vertices from the mesh are inside of this. That's going to be a real fast, easy, intuitive way for me to uh, decide what's an anchor point, what is not going to move. Um, there are lots of ways that you could do this. You could grab the naked edge here of the top and then grab specific points along that. Um, but I think this is really the easiest way to do it. So here we've got uh, surface, the surface section of Grasshopper, and within that is analysis, and you can test whether or not points are inside of a BREP, um, a solid uh, boundary representation. So I'll grab that point in BREP, 
and the B rep is going to be what we just made, that sphere. And I'll turn off the preview for that. And then the points are going to be these vertices. Now what comes out of this component is a list of true and false values. So it's not actually the points yet. It is true and false values. And you can do lots of tests like this in, in Grasshopper. Um, but those true and false values are not the actual stuff you want yet. So you need to use a culling component, which is in sets, sequence, cull pattern. So cull, culling is uh, removing from a list. So any false values are going to uh, mean that the corresponding vertice is not selected. Any true values will mean that it is selected. So I'll drag my true and false into the cull pattern. And then the list that I'm going through will be from vertices. And now when I select this component, you can see that a couple of those vertices highlight here. Let me disable the preview of this so it's a lot easier to see like that. And as we move this sphere around, you're going to see that that the vertices that get highlighted from the mesh change because it's testing whether or not those are inside. Now I'm going to um, show you one thing that's related to this which will definitely come up if you use this method. I'm going to drag this in Rhino, tap the Alt key to make a copy. And so now I've got two of them. I'm going to select both. I'll right click that B rep component and choose set multiple B reps instead of uh, what I initially did, which was set one B rep. So you're going to get to a point where you want to anchor something on the left side and something on the right side. So set multiple B reps. It's going to let you do that. But check out what happens. This list isn't showing me the one over here, the points inside that sphere over there. It's not showing me them. And the reason is that this list of multiple B reps needs to be um, looked at individually. So it's looking at these as a, um, a collection of one group of data. If you right click this B rep input and you choose this graft option, then it's going to look at each one as its own um, piece of data. And now when I select this, I get the points inside each of the spheres. Let's do it one more time. I'll drag this, tap the Alt key. I'll shift select all three of these, right click the B rep component, set multiple B reps, and there we go. So those are going to be our anchors. All right, now we're going to need some other components, and these are all going to be from the kangaroo section of Grasshopper now. Um, let's see. First thing first, we need the mesh to go into our show component. This is going to allow us to see the physics um, simulation, and we won't have to bake out the geometry. And now back into the kangaroo section here, goals point. We're going to need uh, a floor. You can either use a floor component or floor friction. I'll use floor friction. And we're also going to need under goals mesh an edge lengths. And also under goals mesh we'll need pressure. And same section, we'll need wind, like that. Maybe I'll make the wind like that. And I think that, um, ah, one more. Under goals point, we need anchor. All that work we did to get these, we need those as our anchor points. Now all of these are going to drag into that second input on the entwine component. Now you can add multiple inputs. You just have to hold down shift before you release them. So you can drag, hold down shift, drag, hold down shift, drag, hold down shift. And the entwine result is not hooked up to goal objects yet on the solver components and so nothing's happening yet. 
and we're just connecting connecting the components first. Now this um, top one that we have here in the list we just made, those anchor points are going to come from our our call pattern. So we'll drag points into there. And the mesh is the M input on these uh, other three. So we'll drag the quad remesh result into there and into here and into here. And then points for uh, to be impacted by the floor. That would be any of the vertices at all from our quad remesh. So I'll grab the vertices out of there and drag that down to the floor. Now over here in our solver component we've got a on input. This is where that boolean toggle is going to go and you can double click where it says false or true and just toggle whether or not it's on. And the reset input is the one that's going to take the button. And then our entwine our result will go into goals objects there. And as soon as I do that, I get this red preview here of the mesh. And the reason I'm getting that preview is because of the show component, but it's also uh, previewed in the solver component and in this list item component. So this output here from the solver is actually going to give me the, um, I believe those are the vertices plus plus the mesh, or it might be the edges, and then the mesh. But if you right click this, you can just say, turn off the preview there. And this will be just one, uh, one object for us when we bake this one out. Now we've got um, everything hooked up. It's just not on. So if we double click this, turn it to true, when we click the reset, you can see there's like a flash. If you keep clicking the button, you're resetting it, but then it, it's going away. And the reason it's going away is because the these factors that we have working off of all the points and the mesh, these are too strong. So if you mouse over the wind vector input on the wind component there, you can see it says 1, 0, 0. That means it has uh, a wind value in the x direction, which is coming uh, along the red line here, at a value of 1. So let's turn the toggle to false, and I'll reset. And let's control which direction the wind is pointing and how strong it is. So I'll go into the vector section, vector section of the vector tab, and I'll grab a z vector. So this is straight up and down in Rhino, is Z. Also in that vector section, a reverse, because I don't want to go up, I want to go down. I want it to point down. So I'll drag that Z vector into the reverse, and that's going to go into the wind vector. Now the factor is actually the power of the wind. So we'll grab a number slider. I showed you that fancy way of making a number slider by double clicking the canvas. If you go into params input and just grab the default number slider, it'll be 0 to 1. It's set at uh, 0.25 by default. And you can see it for just a second longer now because of the uh, reduction in the wind. Now the other thing that is making it just blow up here is that the strength of pressure is also one. I'm going to reuse this number slider here. I'll drag it and just like you can in Rhino, I'll, I'll tap Alt and release to make a copy. And I'm going to put that into pressure too. And I'm going to lower that number slider for pressure, something like three hundredths and I'll lower my factor for Z um, for the wind as well. And now we're not making it go away because the powers are not so strong that it just rips off the anchor. Because the strength of the anchor, um, it can only take so much force before it's just going to break. So really, you, this is a finesse game. I won't lie to you. Kangaroo is a real finesse game and these these values tend to work best if they are quite low. 
Now if you have the calculation happening here and you can see those anchors are keeping the mesh right there but then we've got this downward force from the wind like this and we've got this pressure you can play with the sliders in real time as it actually is is calculating that simulation which is really neat and when you want it to just stop you toggle that true false value on the boolean boolean toggle component and this is the mesh that we could bake out and you can bake it out by right clicking it choose bake say OK and then you've got this mesh object. I'm going to shaded mode for a second here so you can see it. And this mesh is all quads which is going to allow us to create a sub D and then also go to a single NURB surface. I'll delete it right now because we've got a, another element that we're going to add to this um, setup this kangaroo setup and that is the collision with the bottle form the original bottle form which uh, if I turn back on that preview for it is the entire bottle right and so we're going to go into the kangaroo goals collision section and get a solid point collide now the points that are going to collide are going to be all the vertices of our quad remeshed surface and the solid will be the referenced b-rep of the whole bottle and I'll add that remember to hold down shift so you don't replace all the other inputs I'll add that and then reset and start the solver again and this time it's not fluttering as much because those points are hitting the bottle form and we can increase our you know wind a little bit or increase our pressure it all has to do with um, how many vertices are in that mesh the quad remesh and also the distance that our initial surface was from from the model. So that's this surface here. If we turn on the control points and scale those up, the reference reference stays intact. So this just creates more distance before it relaxes and then hits. And tweaking that you can get you can get some interesting results that way. Just giving it a bigger bigger gap to fall down. Now I think I want to add some anchor points to the bottom here so I'm going to toggle the solver off for a second reset it and I'm going to use our sphere here tap alt make a copy maybe I'll make this a little bit larger this is my search area right if you think of it like that for anchor points and I'm going to uh, make a copy over there, drag it, tap alt, make a copy over there like that. And I'll add more vertices too. So I'm going to go to the initial quad remesh and up it to a thousand so we have more vertices. And let's go ahead and add, change all of these um, search areas, these search bubbles if you want to think of them, add those to the b-rep, set multiple b-reps like that. So you can see now I've got my anchor points down here. And you could do this in the middle of the fabric as well um, and and just move these around in order to uh, change what is actually seen as an anchor point. This is why I like this method of creating anchors. All right, and then let's start it again. And this time we're not um, moving the entire bottom edge, which is going to create a little bit more bagging underneath like that. Like that. And then when you like it, you can stop the solver and bake it out. So you right click that list item component, bake it out. 
and I'm going to turn off the preview of Grasshopper with these icons at the top right. Just remember that you've done this. You're going to have to go back to that to preview it again. You might come back and wonder why you don't see anything. And I'm just toggling that preview off for a second, minimizing Grasshopper. If you're on Mac, you have to use the um, little yellow circle to minimize Grasshopper. But on Windows, you can just double click the title bar of the canvas. And then I'll go into shaded mode. I'm going to grab that mesh that we just baked out. And I'm also going to grab the bottle. I'm going to drag them off to the side and tap Alt to make a copy. So I made a copy here so that um, I'm not affecting the objects that are referenced in the grasshopper definition. Those stay there. Now you can see that the the mesh hasn't completely stopped at the outer skin of the bottle. It's not uh, foolproof. Um, it, there's a lot of factors depending on whether or not those um, vertices will collide. And your forces as well as how many vertices are involved are, um, are the major influencers there. But this is good enough. This is going to be fine. This is great for form finding. So I don't want the exterior surface of my bottle here. So I'm going to use split, iso curve, uh, might as well shrink the result. And then I'll split it like right there. And then also right, maybe right there. And then I'll select this surface and delete it. And now I'm going to take our mesh that we have here. And you might have mesh wires on in your display mode. So it's just going to look like that. And I'm going to take this mesh and use the command 2 sub D. So if you have an all quad mesh, you can use this on meshes that are not all quads, but it's best to use it on a mesh with all quads for, for the reason you'll see in a moment. If you do convert to sub D with a quad mesh, and I'm going to choose to delete input so that the mesh goes away, and press enter. Now I have a sub D surface. Uh, if you're used to sub D modeling in polygon modelers, this will look like uh, three or four subdivision levels of a, a mesh subdivision modifier. But this is actually a subdivision surface. Um, it's, it's like a NURB surface, really, in terms of its precision in Rhino. And because of that, this special representation of a sub D in Rhino, we can convert this into a NURB surface. And because it's all quads, there are no um, what are called extraordinary points, um, spots that have more than four edges or three edges. Uh, this will convert to just one surface. And to do that, we use the two NURBS command. And I'll also choose the option to delete the input so the sub D goes away. And I'll turn off my ISO curves so you can see that this is one single surface, one single NURB surface now. And because of the gap that I have here, we'll go into our surface tools in Rhino and use blend SRF. And we'll blend from that to that. And I'll leave it at curvature continuity. And then we'll do the same thing down here. Blend from that to that. And I'll join those together with the join command, just J and enter. And if I turn off my edges, you can see we now have one closed poly surface as properties reports for this, this model. So the inside is still smooth. It's still the original revolve. And the exterior has gone through that process in Kangaroo to uh, relax the form and create that fabric look. So I'll go back to the definition in Grasshopper here so you can take a look at how it's all set up. And I hope this has been an enjoyable video and you've learned something about Kangaroo. Thanks for watching.